Masters. Hey. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it changes for uh, Nazi from a, a standpoint that uh, when he is uh, dried up in scoring chances, I think it's more about his ability to move his feet, play a little bit more of a north-south versus an east-west, and be involved physically. When he's on top of his game, he's uh, somewhat of an agitator, somewhat of a physical player. You know, and I think that he's got more speed going through the neutral ice than what he displays. And those are the things that we constantly try to address. And uh, I think, again, in defense of him, I think he's worked on his defensive game a lot more. I think he's a lot lower down in the, in the defensive zone. He's worked on his face-offs. He's done a lot of those things that we've asked of him. And then now he's in a little bit of a dry spell. So we've got to find ways to get, help him through it. When it comes to a goal scorer like that, is not getting goals. Do you have to talk to him, or is he the type of guy you just kind of leave and let him figure it out? Uh, I, I think with Nazi, you know, there's obviously there's always uh, chances for communication and, and review, and it's all about his shifts and his line. Sh and a lot of times we'll go with a line, um, and we'll review their shifts and what's going on out there. Obviously, with uh, Danny Winnick being out for a couple games, it changed his line mates again. Uh, we've predominantly had him with uh, Clarkson, uh, you know, since Lupo got hurt. So there has been some change there too. So again, we're not, uh, you know, we're not absolving anybody of, uh, of responsibility, but there has been some, some changes that have taken place in, in his line mates. And is it fair to say your, your players are starting to hold each other accountable in the way that you, a coach would want them to? I, I think, again, that's part of the maturing of a team. I think that is ultimately any coach would like um, the players to to take control of all the situations. But there are things that, you know, that you step in for and that you you make a contribution. But I think uh, any successful hockey club has leaders that are not afraid to accept some of the responsibility of doling out not only criticism but uh, positives at the right time. And as we always talk about, we'd love to have 15 leaders or so-called leaders in the room. And the good teams and the, and the successful teams seem to find a way that everybody's satisfied with their contribution. And when somebody is not contributing to the level of what the team's expectations are, that somebody's not afraid to just say, hello, this is the way we do it here. Randy, what has Roman Pollock uh, brought to you guys defensively? Uh, Roman, big, stiff, you know, stay-at-home defenseman that has displayed that he does like to get up on the rush. And that's been quite a surprise at times. Uh, I'm not saying he's leading the, the team in rushing, but he, he's a guy that has fun. And it's uh, enjoyable when his teammates get hooping and hollering and when he takes off with, with the puck. And, and that's typical of when you have defensive type of people that are cast in that one mode in the league, and then all of a sudden they're taking off with the puck and everybody's going, oh, what is that? And it does lead to a little bit more camaraderie and a little bit more lighter atmosphere around when the people do those things. Peter Hollenbaum has goals in three straight games. I mean, I don't know if that should be a surprise to anybody. He was a first-round draft pick. Is he just starting to find his way in this league? Uh, again, I, with Peter, it, it's uh, the skill was always uh, something that was there. Uh, obviously, uh, with him, uh, he hasn't had an opportunity to play the minutes that he's he's playing now, um, but again, that's the chicken before the egg theory. Is should he have gotten those minutes, or does he have to? Uh, the reason he's getting those minutes is because he's playing better, you know. And then we always try to try to make sure that we're giving the player an opportunity to display the skill set that he, that he possesses, and do some of the things that are maybe out of his character. And that was one of the things that he came to us. He'd never been a penalty killer before, and he'd asked if he could get some minutes of penalty killing. And it seems to have reinvigorated him uh, from a standpoint. He got his confidence, and he's playing at a higher level, and he's made a contribution in the penalty killing. So hats off to him. Randy, going back to the blue line, uh, from his own acknowledgement, Stefan Robida told me that he was chasing the game early on in the season. Is he now giving you what you were expecting, or if there's still some improvement? I still think there's more with Ro Roby. I think, again, uh, he recognizes when the last time we had, we had a conversation probably seven, eight games ago in the one-on-one -on -one meetings that he felt he was chasing the game. But there are things that, 
the little things that he does as a uh, seasoned pro that he doesn't have to do a lot to be effective. Positioning, his compete, his hockey sense, all those things are, are the package that you get with Roby and we still think there's more for him to deliver in that package. Well, that was the, in the grand scheme of things. That was the plan um, over the course of the summer is, is to have a veteran presence with either Gardner or Morgan Riley. Now things change when you're forced to do some of the things. And I know early in the season we had Roby with uh, I think it was Dion. You know, and I think we were putting him in a situation that he couldn't have success with. There was too many minutes and playing up against the 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 better players early in the season, and, and I, I thought that was kind of unfair. Owen mentioned that uh, the way that line views it is that there's almost, they don't have positions, that they all kind of play roving positions. Do you see anything different about the way they play as a result of they look different than other lines? No, I think what, what in reality what that is, is that's puck support and recognizing when one guy's low, then we'll accept two guys being low, but we won't accept three. You know, having good position with that third man, rotating people into that position. When you're the high guy, you have responsibility. If you have the puck and you're the high guy, you better not turn that thing over. And when you do, there's two guys that got to pedal their butts back from the goal line, and they, they are upset with it. So it's, it's all that learning curve, and that, that process that takes place of understanding the strengths of your line and play to your strengths. And why do you think that Branson and Penelope uh, mesh, mesh well as a parent? Well, big, strong guys. Both are, uh, are veteran players. Both can play offensive situations. Both can move the puck effectively. Uh, both can be physical. You know, so it's, again, it, we think that the parts are interchangeable. And that we'd like to be able to say, hey, we can play anybody with anybody on any given night, no matter where we go. And we will do that over the course of the season. And it's not to say that this pairing is cast in, in stone night in, night out, because there are certain adjustments you have to make be it through injuries, be it through illness, be it through record, be it through opposition, who you're playing. You know, we're going to play a player tonight, the best player in the world, right now. Getting the puck out with a lot more ease over the last couple of weeks in terms of you know, transition. And, um, is that a big, was that a big point of emphasis from last year coming into this year? Yeah, I, I think, again, when you, when you look at uh, your puck recoveries, uh, everybody's doing the same thing. There isn't many secrets. Uh, but I think what happens in the neutral ice has a big effect on that. How freely teams are moving through the neutral ice in the game today are, is usually an indication of how much time you're spending in your own zone. The better teams in the league have found ways to execute their zone with one pass or two passes. And I know there was an old coach, the name is Al Arbor, said the first pass has to be the best one, and the least amount of time that you can spend in your zone, the better chances you're going to have. And that hasn't changed in today's hockey. Randy, third man, I just want to get back to that. Uh, I can't tell you the secret. No, other than that, though, <laughs> in terms of the D pitching up and contributing offensively the way they've had the last three games, has knowing they've got that security, that safety net back there, helped them offensively? Well, I, I think every team in the league pinches their D down the walls. And if you want to pinch your D down the walls without a third man high, you're going to be giving odd man rushes up. So it's a staple that you have to establish. We're going to play a team tonight that's going to pinch down the walls. Uh, you know, and as simple as that. And uh, as I say, there's not a lot of things that change in systems. There are some tweaks. There are some individual things that teams like to do uh, within their framework. But it's not drastically different from team to team. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to establish a, something that is, is pliable and that we can apply with our players, the skill set and the skating ability that we have with our team.